Hi, my name is Kelly and welcome to Therapy Designs, the channel that's all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva. If you're new to print-on-demand and would like to see some useful videos and tips and tricks on how to create specific designs every week, please hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos as I show you step-by-step -step how to create unique designs each week. So today I'm going to be going over how to make a simple text-based design for print-on-demand using Canva. So once you've logged into your Canva account, the first thing we're going to do is pull up a blank page. Now in the box over here, there's one for custom size. So if you click on that, you can put in your width and your height. It's set for pixels right now, but if you want to, you can put inches, millimeters, centimeters. You're going to want to design in pixels for print on demand. Now I always use 4500 by 5400 because that is the standard t-shirt size for merch by Amazon. So that's the basic one that I use for all of my designs. So you can type it in or because I've already used it, I'm just going to click on it here. And this is going to open up your blank page. Now I'm going to go ahead and design on a black background. So I'm going to click here, and then if I come up to this little color box, I'm just going to select black. So for our text-based design, the first thing we're going to do is select text. So if I come over here, there's a bunch of different tabs. And if I go up to the text tab and I click that, it's going to pull up a bunch of different pre-made texts for you. Now you can scroll down, you can select any one you want, all of them can be edited at any time. So for the purposes of this, I'm just going to come up to the top here and I'm going to pick Rodeo. And I'm going to do a shirt that says Vintage 1982 for anybody who's turning 40 years old this year. So I'm going to highlight Rodeo and I'm going to put in Vintage. Okay. So the first thing we'll see is that it didn't all fit on one line. So to correct that, it's easy. Just click on it and you're going to drag the box out until it all fits on one line. Okay. Next, uh, the Rodeo font, it's hard to tell right now. If I make it a little bit bigger, it does have a little bit of an outline to it that I want to get rid of. So if I come up here to effects and I click that, it's going to pull up the effects. So right now it's on echo. But you can see there's different ones. There's shadow, lift, uh, hollow, splice, come down here, glitch, neon, background. So there's a bunch of different ones. You can also come down here and you can curve the text if you want to. Uh, for this, I don't want any kind of a background, so I'm just going to go to none. So now I've got no special effects here. So I have vintage, and now I want to go ahead and put 1982. So the easiest way to pull up more text boxes is just to hit T on your keyboard. So if you hit T, it's going to pull up a brand new text box using the same font that you already have open. So again, I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to put 1982. Perfect. So I've got vintage 1982, and now I want to select a font because I want to change it. So if I click this, you can come up here, and this is where you're going to select your font. So if I open it, you'll see there's hundreds and hundreds of fonts. You could be scrolling forever just looking for the font you want. If you happen to know the font that you want by name, you can come up here and simply type the name in. If you don't know what font you want by name, but you know that you want, let's say, script, or you know you want... Um, textured, you can write that in here and it'll pull up all of those. So for example, if I put textured, oops, helps if I spell it right, it's going to pull up all the different textured fonts. And so I can click on any of these and it will change the font to a textured font. Okay. I actually don't want textured for this example. I am going to use display. So they've got some up here that you can pick from, handwriting, corporate, display, headings, paragraph. I'm going to hit display. And so now it's pulling up all the different fonts under display. And again, you can scroll down 
and you can pick different ones, see what they look like. I happen to know that for this example, I'm going to want to use a font called Duanu. So I'm actually going to type that in here. So that is D-O-N-A-U. And that's the font that I want right here. So I have my vintage, which I'm going to now just pull out the corners to make it bigger. And so that is what I want for vintage. And I'm going to do the same thing for 1982, but I want this to be in a different font. So for this one, you can repeat the same steps. I happen to know for this one that I want to have the Metropolis font, so I'm just going to type that in. And it'll pull up Metropolis. And so there's my 1982. And again, I'm going to go ahead and make it nice and big. And there we go. So now I have Vintage 1982. So at this point now, I want to select some colors. I want it to have a vintage feel to it. So there's a few different ways you can do colors. You can simply click on the color box here. You can select from any of the pre-made colors or let's say I pick yellow. I can come up here to the add new color box and now I can select anywhere in here and just sort of play around until I get the shade that I like. So I want sort of a tannish color, but I want it to be pretty light tan, something, yeah, something like that. Okay, so if I want to, by the way, I can go down here to change all, and it'll change all of the original text in, uh, to this new color. So for example, there, now it's all in this new color. Another way that you can select colors is by using colors from photos. And I'm just going to show you an example of that here. So if I go over to my side tabs and I come up to elements. Now this is where you can search for graphics or photos and I can search for anything I want. So let's just say I want to put in um, just the word vintage. And I'm going to select photos. It's coming up with different vintage style photos, right? So let's say I just take this photo and I'm not going to use it, but I like the colors in it, let's say. I can bring it down here in the corner. And now if I was to select my 1982 and come up here to colors, you'll see it's brought in colors from that photo. So I could match the colors on the photo. So if I, if I have a photo where I like the color palette, I can select colors off of that color palette. And that's just one example. Um, that you can use and you can do that multiple times over so I can drag that photo out and say okay well now maybe I want a pinkish colors here and I can do the same thing so again I can click and I can select anywhere on this color palette so that's one example of a way that you can select colors um, color palettes anyways but here's what I want to do for this one I want to make each um, each number a different color. So to do that, I just have to highlight. So I'm going to highlight this first one. And the first one, I'm going to want it to be a shade of red. So I'll come here. I'm going to select red. I'm going to come up here and I want it to be more of a vintage color. So you can see there it's very bright. If I come down here, it's very dark. I want to make it a little lighter because it's on a dark background. I want it to be able to show, but I also still want to keep it a nice vintage color. So I kind of like that. So the next one, I'm going to put more of an orange tone to it. So I'm going to select orange. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to repeat the process. I want it to be kind of light, but I still want it to be an orangey shade. And you can just sort of play with it until you get it how you like it. So that's fine there. Take the next one. Oops. So for the eight, I'm going to want to go with a uh, greenish color. So I'm going to go ahead and pick green, do the same thing. That's way too bright for me. I'm going to come down here, make it a little lighter. So they'll keep it in the vintage kind of grayish tone, maybe a little lighter than that. Perfect. 
And then lastly, I'm going to pick the two, and the two I want to be sort of a bluish tone. So I'm going to come down here, pick my blue, repeat the steps. Actually, I like that one a lot. So now I have a vintage 1982. Now let's say I want the 1982 to pop a little bit more. These are sort of dark colors on a dark background, so I don't want it to blend in too much. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little shadow, but I'm going to use a, a light shadow on it. So I can come up here to effects, just like I showed you before. I'm going to hit shadow. Now down here is where you're going to pick the color for the shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that same tan color that I used for vintage. And we can see it's still very light. So I'm going to bring this transparency. I'm going to get rid of the transparency. So now it's very bright. Now the offset is still quite a bit. So I'm going to bring that offset down by sliding that over. I just want a very small offset. Perfect right there. You can also blur it. I don't really want to blur it, but just so you can see, you can make it really blurry. You can also change the direction. So I like the way I like where it is right now, but for example, if I move this, I can move the direction of the shadow. But I kind of liked it right about there. Good. So there I have my vintage 1982 uh, design for Prince on Demand t-shirts. So the step here now would be to title it. So right now it says vintage up here. This is where you put the title. It says vintage because that was the first text box that I put in. I'm going to be a little bit more specific. I'm going to put vintage 1982. Perfect. So now I have it all titled. Now I'm going to go ahead and download it. So there's a box up here that says download. I'm going to click on that. Now suggested, it says a PNG file. You're going to leave that alone. We're going to leave the size alone. You're going to want to select a transparent background. By clicking the transparent background uh, box, it's going to get rid of this black background so that when you go to put this on a t-shirt, you're not going to have a big black box. You're only going to have the text. So I can download this now as a transparent background. Click download. And you can see down here it's in the process. And that was actually really fast. Perfect. And so that is how you make a simple text-based design for your print-on-demand business. That's it for this video. If you found this useful, please be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative, and we'll see you next time.